Well, let's discuss all of these post-election scenarios with our political regulars. The journalist and Conservative peer, Danny Finkelstein, Matthew Taylor, Chief Executive of the RSA, and former Head of Policy to Tony Blair, and Times political columnist, Rachel Sylvester. I mean, you've all watched the four scenarios, and of course they'll be online forever, and we can look at them again and again as the months go by. But first of all, do you broadly agree with each what each scenario is saying is there'll be no overall majority. Is that how it's looking to you, Danny? It's pretty likely. I mean, I think the most, the most striking thing for me was that unless the Conservatives are the largest party, mm -hmm. probably Ed Miliband gets to form, uh, become Prime Minister. Just because when you look at all the forces that come together, most mm -hmm. of those votes come from parties of the left and are more likely to cooperate with him. So, <clears throat> so three of the f films ended with Ed Miliband becoming Prime Minister uh, in a pretty unappetising... Um, Melange. Melange, uh, but of course, you know, that of course is a matter of taste. I think, in a way, that the, the films are interesting and they do offer a path. I, I think it's possible rather than probable, a path for the Conservatives to win, which is if the Conservatives were to pull ahead a bit. And if it felt the choice was basically between a Conservative government and some kind of chaotic situation, that could be something that the Conservatives could play on. But by and large, what, what would be suggested by any of these scenarios is that the idea of a formal coalition is less likely. I think that's what's fascinating. And when you talk mm. to people behind the scenes in all the parties, they actually prefer the idea of minority government and some kind of messy melange, as you put it, than a formal but coalition. But why is that now? Because, of course, we, we, it seems to me that over the last few years, the public's actually quite liked the idea mm. of coalition. But and actually, and it's worked quite well, even despite all the rather fabricated rows, etc. They have got things done. So why wouldn't they want it this time around? It's partly, I think, both the Labour and the Tory leaders are, more, are going to be more beholden to their yeah. backbenchers mm -hmm. and the extremes of the party. Also, the Liberal Democrats wouldn't be able to offer stability. Mm -hmm. This time they were able to offer David Cameron five years. That was worth the price. Uh, this time they wouldn't be able to do that. So the attraction to the main parties is smaller. And you can understand why the, the parties look at the Liberal Democrat experience. Yeah, I also, well, well, the the, the, the I Liberal also Democratic experience has not been a, a good one on a number of issues. Of course, an early hit in tuition fees. And, and they have, in the last year, become much more truculent. Yeah, I also think that notwithstanding the fixed term legislation, it's quite likely that people feel another election is, is in the offing. So it's, you know, I think the possibility of two elections this year is not... You have to have a confidence wouldn't you? You would. But if you are in a chaotic situation where it feels like the only way you can create a government is to be, is to be doing it on such a weak mandate that immediately you put yourself in the firing line. Right. right. So one thing that's clear in all these scenarios is that the SNP has got skin in the game. How would you think they would impact on Westminster? Well, I think one of the big issues which maybe didn't come out as much as it might mm. in the films is Trident. Yeah. So in the election, we're going to have a red line election. People are going to start being pushed, not what is your policies, but what are your red lines on policies? We haven't really seen that happen. And one of the things, the first things that's going to happen, Ed Miliband will be pushed on whether he has got the same red line on Trident that Nicola Sturgeon has already established. If he puts his red line in a different position, that will make the relationship between the Labour Party and, and the SNP still negotiable, actually, but very much more tricky. Uh, it would make it negotiable, but actually it would be quite difficult for the SNP to sell this idea of principle if they will do a deal with a leader who will not support the ending of Trident. Well, I think it will be very difficult for them. And so I think the, 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 uh, new, the thing will be on Ed Miliband to try to find a, a, a way that he can still work with them. Given and actually, that. Um, Alex Salmond, when we interviewed him just before Christmas, mm -hmm. he said there's no way he would, or he'd much prefer not to do a formal coalition. And he's run a minority government. So on the other side, he knows how to play it for but all it's worth. I, I and think I think the danger of all this is that you end up with sort of lots of backroom deals, the smaller parties exerting some yeah. kind of disproportionate, asymmetric, it's sort of asymmetric politics, rather like asymmetric mm. warfare. And, and the public feel, well, hang on a minute, we didn't vote for these backroom deals. I think deals. that's right. And I think that the, the danger about... The fascinating thing of the films were the danger of this kind of numbers game, coalition game, is it underestimates the legitimacy problem that exists in all these scenarios. Uh, and I think the degree to which people are going to want to grab power knowing that they will face a massive legitimacy yeah. crisis almost immediately and that they've got to carry out, however it is, well, some very unpopular decisions. But, but what, you know, we've got four months, what might change before then? What might occasion change? Might the TV, I mean, the TV debate debacle goes on? Of course, David Cameron still has not agreed to take part in these debates, but in a way, the broadcasters have shot his fox by inc including the Greens. Well, it's a, it, 
You can look at it one of two ways. Either they've shot his fox. The other thing, though, that they've done is shot the prospect of a very bad debate for him, which is three parties plus Nigel Farage. Yeah. I was totally against him doing that on, in terms of um, the, the sort of way that that would play out. So this is a better arrangement for him. But on the other hand, it's much more difficult for him to avoid. And he still then gets this two... This debate with Ed Miliband, good Two because it, prime good because it concentrates the issue on who's the prime minister. That's what he wants, but also so, carrying some risk that so Ed he Miliband looks, overperforms. He looks, he, he, he looks weak now. If he doesn't agree straight, I mean, he, he will agree, won't he? I think he has to. I think he has to. think he has to agree? I think he will. Although. As it so happens, I don't know what you think, Rachel, but I think that the cost of these kind of political process rows in terms of real votes, I'm not sure how big they are. I think the only question about that is, uh, in, in principle, you're sort of right, but actually the, this election is also going to be about the way in which politics is conducted. Yes. And that people feeling disillusioned with politicians but, kind of playing games. Well, it's interesting. And I think if David Cameron looks like he's trying to avoid openness and kind of being out there to the voters. I think that looks really bad in that bigger picture and question. Of course, things always go wrong. Look at Gordon Brown and his live microphone and so forth. But is there anything that, you know, that could be a game changer? I think if there is, and who knows the effect of these Greek elections, but if there is uh, more sign of an economic upturn, it is possible that feel good factor to come into play. I, you know, I still think that, that, that the Conservatives have got most of the advantages on their side. And there is still this sense that that could start to come through. They're ahead on the economy. They've got the most popular of the leaders, not saying much. Uh, and Ed Miliband is still very unpopular. I think if the Conservatives pull ahead, they could still get a kind of momentum that carries them further than we've thought they would.